Hello there, Cancers. Welcome. So, um, when I was shuffling out this spread for you, I do uh, have an image that I want to convey to you. And um, there were words that came through. And uh, so it's not so much about the image. It's mainly the words associated with it. Okay. I feel like it, it has more importance. Um, so first of all, I see this, this uh, bedroom scene. Okay. So there's like a, a window and it opens out into the, um, I guess the backyard of the house. And there's a tree with like um, a tire swing that's nailed to the branch of the tree. And then in bed, you have this little boy. He's very, very young. He's probably like six or seven. He's looking out into the window. The window's open. He's looking out at the tree. And so what I started to see was um, the scene is moving. So it's like a nighttime scene. He's supposed to be in bed. He's, he's kind of bored. He doesn't want to sleep yet. He wants to like go outside and play. But it's nighttime, so you know his parents are probably forcing him to go to bed, and they're assuming that he's sleeping. But he's looking at the tree, and you see the passage of time. So uh, it's a nighttime scene, and then you know the the earth kind of moves and shifts, and then the sun starts to rise, and then you see this passage of time where you know it's like uh, winter starts to come in, the snow, the snowflakes start to kind of come in through his window and then after that the, sp um, the the snow melts and then the spring season starts to come in and you have cooler weather and you have like sun streaming into this window. So he's looking at the passage of time, the passage of all the seasons uh, from his window. And um, the words and the phrases that I started hearing is um, the definitely the passage of time, wanting to grow up, wanting to be out there, wanting to be an adult, wanting to be able to dictate uh, your own life, you know, when to sleep, when to go outside, when to eat. And I feel like this child, this is somebody who's very eager to grow up, okay? And um, I also feel like, you know, it, it's um, it's like wanting that independence, okay? Um, so what I'm feeling is, I feel like for many of you, this you might be the, this child that I'm seeing. And uh, let me talk a little bit about the past, okay? Because I feel like, um, first of all, the Mercury retrograde cycle is going to um, be throughout the month of November. We are starting Mercury retrograde on the 31st of October and uh, it's going to end, you know, it, it, it's going to run through the first three weeks of November, but then the last week of November we have like a shadow period. And so pretty much all of November is going to be about, um, about revisiting things. And then I feel for you guys in particular, it is going to be revisiting the choices that we have made, the decisions that we have made, so that we can glean and extract wisdom from it, okay? So I feel right off the bat, this month might be a little bit uncomfortable because you're confronting your demons. You're confronting the past. You're confronting choices and decisions that you have made in the past. And I do feel the month brings about immense um, opportunities for transformation. If you don't like where you are, you're going to be able to change location. If you don't like the things that you have done in the past, you're going to be able to do like a 180, you know, uh, change direction, um, take a different path. If you don't like the person that you're around, you're going to be able to change your group of friends. If you don't like the lover that you have, you're going to be able to switch things up, you know, um, get out of situation. So I do feel like it's a very reflective type of a month. Okay. So going back to that original image, um, let me talk a little bit about where I feel like the, the pieces are fitting in for you guys. I feel as if, um, for many of you, you know, uh, when you were younger, you were very eager to grow up. Okay, you want it to kind of like get out into the world, get your hands dirty, experience things, live life and just um, uh, not have to. I just feel like this, this sense of like feeling that, you know, life is like a, an, an, un, like a, a unopened box, like a present wrapped up in a, in a bow and with wrapping paper and you're so eager to like tear it open and just you know get your hands dirty and just really embrace and live life 
And I feel for many of you, this can come in all forms and shapes and sizes. Like wanting to, you know, really experience all the nitty gritty things in life, okay? I see a lot of experimentation when it comes to drugs, alcohol, um, even like, you know, uh, overindulging in those things, but also um, wanting to just, you know, really grab life by the horns and live as if there's no tomorrow, okay? Because like the, the image of that child is coming through. It's a, it's a child that is very like innocent, naive and, and things like that. So I feel like you kind of like, you know, rushed in there, like, let's do it first, ask questions later. And uh, I feel like it was a cycle, like a spiral, where you might have gotten involved with the wrong people, you might have experimented with the wrong things, experimented with the wrong substance, experimented with the wrong uh, relationships. And I just see like a lot of uh, overindulging and, and wanting to just really, really experiment. And then I also felt like for many of you, um, you might have been like on, on the flip side, on the opposite end of the spectrum. I see somebody who's like um, really, you know, like who, who has um, who has had to grow up at a very young age. There were a lot of like expectations imposed upon many of you. It kept you on the straight and narrow, right? Like it, it kept you uh going through school it kept you very responsible it made you kind of like very very straight laced and then whatever age you're at you maybe you know going off to college or maybe in your 30s or maybe even now in your 40s whatever age you're at you went through a phase where you just like i i want to indulge I, I want to you know um let loose i want to have no restrictions i want to have no baggage i i just want to be irresponsible like just I feel like that tug and pull with many of you. And so the first group of you, I do feel like you need it to experiment it. You need it to, you know, overindulge. You need it to get yourself in wrong situations with the wrong people even in order for you to learn, in order for you to shape up, in order for you to realize that, oh, you know, been there, done that, not for me. Okay. And then that first group of you, you have come in with this energy as the emperor. This is somebody who is, you know, has a lot of life experience under their belt. They know who they are. They know themselves really, really, really well. Okay. They know what works for them. They know what doesn't. They know what types of people they want to be with. They know what career path is good for them. And they also know, um, what not to get involved with okay like never again so i feel like you know you you've come into this this sense of like strength and and fortitude and and just knowing yourself inside and outside very very well and then i also see on uh, the, the the latter group of you group number two that were like late bloomers um getting out into the world and being able to overindulge in all of that at a very uh, at a later age and I feel like you're at a point where you want to shirk responsibility. You're just like, I've lived my life as a straight laced person for so long and I just want to break free from it. So I felt like life has been a series of, um, a series of constraints, a series of um, just like limitations. Um, people telling you, you know, these are the limits. You you can't really um, get past the limit. Or people telling you these are things you're expected to do. So I do feel a situation where there might have been a lot of restrictions. There might have been a lot of like um, rules or rules. Rules are put in place and you just have to like, you know, obey the rules. And so what's coming through here? Ten of Swords. Things are like really bunched up. Things are just restrictive and confining and and we don't really know which way to go eight of swords being stuck in a mental prison where our thoughts our fears our um, you know just like being pinned down to social expectations cultural expectations for some of you responsibilities and just you know you're wanting to do the right thing but you feel like it's just so hard right so i feel regardless of you know whether you're group a or group b 
you need it to experiment uh, what it means to be irresponsible. You need it to experiment what it means to be, you know, a straight laced person, because what you're looking for is that middle ground. Okay. What you're looking for is moderation. What you're looking for is kind of like straddling that middle ground and balancing this, um, this side of you that's very responsible and letting yourself indulge once in a while but not letting the need to overindulge kind of like overtake your life to the point where you can't function. So I feel like the universe is teaching you a very important lesson about moderation, about, you know, walking a middle path, about really finding your own way. Okay. Never mind the social expectations, never mind what people expect from you or never mind what you feel is expected of you. It's just a matter of figuring out that, that perfect medium, that works for you. And I feel like you're still in the process of trying to find that. And you're kind of, um, I almost feel like walking down this alley. Okay. And, um, the walls are around you and you, you're walking in the middle. You're trying not to hit the walls. And you know, um, if there's like any type of turbulence, you're going to sway either in either direction. But the trick is to maintain your balance to maintain your stance so that you don't get swayed either way. Okay. Um, so that, that's what I'm feeling here. I feel almost like many of you are in a situation right now where, um, I mentioned last month and I do feel this energy coming back in. Um, because I rarely, like when I do these videos, once I publish them and they're up on the internet, I don't remember the energy, but I'm remembering a lot of the energies for a lot of the signs, not just you. Um, so I feel like it might be significant. I mentioned some, somebody that wants to be found somebody that's like uh, attention seeking. And I feel like you're dealing with someone who is attention seeking. Okay. They, they know how to jab at you. They know how to push your buttons. They do this with everybody they do this with, you know, people in their lives. And I feel like, um, I, I'm, I'm feeling for many of you, you're dealing with somebody in your environment like this, and, uh, you're trying to keep a straight face. You're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to maintain your decorum because you guys are deeply sensitive. I feel like of, out of all the signs, you know, everyone has their sensitivities. But I feel like with Cancerian people, you guys are very empathetic. You guys really care about people. You guys are generally, genuinely very, very nice, caring, um, you know, just decent human being. And so you don't want to say things to hurt other people, not even if they deserve it. You know, you, you're, you're that respectful. You're that loving and caring. You, you don't even want to hurt people, even if they deserve it. So I feel like somebody is like really pushing your buttons. And for some of you, um, it might be a relationship partner and for, for others, it might be a parent for others. It might be, you know, somebody in your work environment, but this is somebody significant. Okay. Because like, if they're not significant, they wouldn't really, it wouldn't really matter if they push your buttons. They're just, you know, some random stranger or just an acquaintance, but I feel like it's somebody significant in your life. And I feel like you're, you, you try to make things work. Okay. You were trying to do the right thing. The emperor, he makes rational decisions. Okay. He is not swayed by his heart. He thinks with his head and he thinks usually for the betterment of all or everybody that's involved. So he knows how to make sacrifices. He understands that with every decision, there is collateral damage. Okay. So I feel like he is, uh, this is your energy where you're in a position that you feel I have to make some sacrifices for the greater good. And I feel like you might have, um, known that something wasn't going to work out. There's a situation you're like, Oh, it's never going to work out, but I owe it to the other person. I owe it to myself. I owe it, owe it to everybody involved to do the right thing, to give it a second chance, to give it a try to really work things out. And I feel that you maintain your decorum, your calmness, your, your temper in this situation. And then I feel like the other person was not able to, um, elicit a re an emotional response out of you. 
So in the past, they might have pushed your buttons, and then you know there might have been like、um, sparring back and forth and and things like that. This time, you have grown, you have matured, you have realized that these are cycles, these are recurring themes, and I'm not going to feed into this energy. And so you remain very very calm. And because you remain very calm, the other person was not able to get a rise out of you, to get an emotional reaction out of you, and so I feel like they had to check themselves out. Okay, you 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 didn't even need to lift a finger. You didn't need to be the bad guy in this situation. They just could no longer get that emotional response out of you, and so they chose to kind of exit the picture, exit stage left. Okay.、Um, Ten of Swords. It's an ending to a situation. It's a、uh, situation that was very heavy. It was、uh, there were a lot of ideological differences between you and the other person. You say one thing, they mean an,、uh, they 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 misinterpret and think you mean another.、Um, what you feel is important is like things that should be be prioritized. They don't feel is important, so it's like a, it's a situation where you're never going to see eye to eye because your values are very different. And so the longer you stayed in it, and I feel like many of you, you had a, a sense of responsibility. You stayed in it for the greater good. You stayed in it because you know there might have been more at stake. You stayed in it because you wanted to help the other person. You wanted to help the situation. And an example: you might have kids with this person, and in the spirit of you know maintaining、um, the the family、um, stability for the the family for the kids, you might have stayed in this situation because for the kids. Even though you know your heart's not in it, and then for others,、uh, another example is you wanted to help the other person, but you were already emotionally checked out. They felt that you're emotionally checked out. So even if you're there physically with them, emotionally you're checked out, and they、um, they have a lot of resentment towards you. Because you're checked out, because they can no longer push your buttons, because they can never evoke any type of emotional response from you. So I feel like somebody was very resentful towards you, and I don't feel that you did anything wrong. I just feel like you you have dried up, you have turned stern and cold towards this person. Even though you're physically there, they feel as if you're not there. So there's definitely.、Um, I'm sensing here, you know, like、um, it, it's 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 done and and over with. And I feel like you're strategizing as to how to extricate, how to leave, how to you know get out of it. And、uh, what we have though, with the Eight of Swords, this is you know being bound in that mental prison, not knowing where to go. Even though you have the tools at your disposal to kind of like cut yourself free. Uh, what's coming through is we do have an unraveling process. Okay, two of wands, the the ribbons, everything is like unraveling. Everything is is coming loose. Everything is becoming lighter. The burden is no longer there, and then you have a situation where things are just、um, becoming lighter, becoming easier, becoming better. But we're definitely dropping a lot of burdens. Okay.、Um, I have the Death card, which signifies to me transformations,、um, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. For those of you who have been in a very difficult, rough situation,、um, this is pretty much, you know, I look at this as when we're in this space where we're walking towards the light, we're in this tunnel, and it's really hard to see. The size of the tunnel could be, you know, God forbid, covered in spiders, covered in yucky stuff.、Um, it is very dank and damp in that tunnel. We can only see like、um, so far ahead of us. We don't know if we reach out, what's gonna be there, you know. So it's a very uncomfortable situation. It, it's、um, it's claustrophobic. It's、um, it's dark. It's、uh, menacing. Even I feel for some of you, but it is not comfortable. It's not comfortable, but there's some 
light streaming through at the end of it. So you do see an end in sight. You do see that there's an end date. There's a change coming into the picture and I have the exact date when that transition is going to happen. And so your mind is kind of like lightened as a result of it. The burden is lightened because you understand that there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's an end date. There's an end in sight. And you're going to be able to make some major transformations happen in your own life once that date is here. Okay, so I definitely feel a situation that has been problematic for some of you. This is um, a work situation where there might have been a lot of bickering, where there might have been a lot of stop starts, like false starts even, where decisions cannot be made, okay? Like one position, one decision is contingent upon another. And then you also have a situation where some of you could be in a leadership position and you're managing people that are just like immature, difficult to deal with, difficult to train, who get super defensive when you're trying to give them like constructive feedback. And there are so many of them and they all exhibit the same types of personality. So it's a very emotionally um, taxing, emotionally draining experience. And then you realize that, you know, if you're in a supervisory position, for example, you realize, oh, there's a there's an end in sight. Maybe it could be for some of you the end of a, 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 a fiscal year where they might no longer be your subordinate. And then for others, it might be the end of a lease the end of a housing situation, the end of a lease. Um, for others, it might be, you know, the end of a contract, the end of a work contract where you're shifting into something new. Or even just um, for some of you, I do see like um, a change, a major change in your, your environment. It could be a housing situation, somebody moving in, somebody moving out. You might be moving location altogether. And then for others, it's just something so liberating and so freeing that you're looking forward to this end date, okay? So I, I feel like you have something extraordinary that you're looking forward to and it's going to change your life as you know it. It's going to bring about a, a, a major uptick in your standing, in your energy and just energetically, I do feel like the, the burden has been lifted, the weight has been off your chest and just you're no longer dealing with immature and just you know attention seeking um, people who know how to push buttons okay so that's looking very very good um, let me see there was another image that I saw and I can't for the life of me remember I did this I think with the um, Gemini people too I, I they got two images and I forgot one of them okay so um, I do want to talk about another uh, situation here, and this is pretty much, you know, the the cards are split like this. Past, present, future. That's what it feels like to me. And so, um, let me talk uh, about something else that's coming into the picture. First of all, um, this is the moon, and this is stereotypically the card for um, Pisces, okay? Pisces is represented by the moon, but I feel like in your situation, this is pretty much you because um, I want to talk about something else. Um, cancer, the sign of cancer is traditionally, it, it rules the uh, fourth house, okay? And the fourth house deals with the mother, okay? It deals with childhood. It deals with, with family. And so the symbology of the moon, I always think of it as cancer. And um, I don't know, maybe some of you are aware of this. Maybe all of you are aware of this, but this is something that I just started to realize about Cancerian people in general, because I had a, I had a friend and um, through like conversations with, you know, the Cancerian friends, that I've had over the years. I, this is something I've just noticed. So like, you know the moon, right? It, it changes its size, its shape throughout the month, okay? So it's like the, the cycle, the lunar cycle. It, it From one day to the next, 
it could be like a waning moon or waxing moon and it, it's it, it just changes its shape it could be a full moon it could be a crescent moon and things like that and so one of the the things in which you are very aware of i feel for the this month is um waning or changing emotions okay and um what i feel is ultimately um kind of scattered in in this spread is you know what you like but then what you like from one day to the next from one month to the next from one year to the next changes and so you're not really sure what you like you're not really sure if you're after the same things from one month to the next you are also afraid to go for something because you're not really sure if next month if that's the thing that you still want and then you're not you're, you're afraid to go over to, to go after something big because you're not sure if all the energy and the effort that you expend into this thing is it going to be worthwhile when next year rolls around am i still going to want it as much as i you know next year as i do now to make all this effort worth it you're coming to the realization about yourself i feel that what you want what you value what you desire from one day to the next from one year to the next from one season to the next it fluctuates and it changes and because it fluctuates and it changes you might be in a position where you just wait for things to happen to you rather than going out into the world and make, making things happen for yourself. Going after the things that you want, going after the situation, the job, the person that you want and expending all that energy and all that effort because you're not really sure if what you want from one day to the next will be constant. And so this energy is very, very transient, okay? It, it basically changes with the ties. It changes from day to day, from hour to hour. And um, what I feel is like, for some of you, you might really love somebody, okay? You love somebody. And uh, when they're on their good days, oh my gosh, the love is amazing. When they're on their bad days, however, you might feel like, oh, I, I, I don't know if I love this person anymore. And um, I'm sensing that you're at a point where, you know, you're trying. And this is why I feel like it's, it's so hard for uh, Cancerian people to go after the object of their affection. The, the things that they really desire, for whatever reason, they have a really roundabout, you know, uh, way of going after the things that they want and and I never understood it, you know growing up I've, I've never understood it but now like um, I, I I feel like that's what That's what That's your mo that's your method of operation Because you're not really sure okay, so this month has a lot to do with you know this this process of deep reflection we have four five we have five major arcana cards coming in a spread with like 10 a 10 card spread so the half of the cards are major arcana cards which is really forcing you to be very very clear about yourself knowing yourself really well like this emperor okay knowing what you like, what you want to um, bring forth into the world, learning from, reflecting on your past experience, like all the things that you had to do to get yourself to this very moment to, in time and figuring out who you are and what you're all about. This is about self-knowledge. The other card that we have here as well is we have the Hermit. And the hermit is wisdom. It's somebody who's very, very wise. It's somebody who's like up high in a tree, like the sloth, or um, you know, who, or, or somebody who has a bird's eye view. Okay, so somebody who who is enlightened, somebody who spent a lot of time on their own, and they figure it out what they need to be happy. And this process isn't just something that happens overnight. 
there have to be a lot of upheavals and and challenges and and you know the breaking down of old paradigms in order for you to figure out in order for something better to emerge but in order for you to figure out what you're all about so like it's it's almost like the the tree you know growing up in the winds okay it it has to be the winds strengthen the the trunks and the branches of a tree okay so in the process of dealing with people who are very opposite from you who ask you questions who force you to defend your beliefs that's when you're very very sure about what it is that you really believe in so i feel like you know all of this happened because if we have the tower the things that we think about ourselves that are not built on reality okay i think i really like to you know stay at home and and just you know knit and then you realize life is passing you by okay and then you realize that no i actually want to be around a lot of people i actually want that connection i'm actually very extroverted i actually need other people so we have to go through life to to really figure out who we are and then you know some of you you're just like oh i want to be the life of the party you guys need other people most of you you need other people you might feel like i want to be the life of the party and i feel like i'm speaking to a lot of cancerians out there who feel like i want to be where the where the the things are happening among the shakers and the movers where you know um you feel like you 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 might want that and then when you're in the midst of it you feel very drained you feel like just unhappy and then you realize that you know what i'm not as extroverted as i think i am i need more downtime i need to recuperate i need more me time so i feel like you have gone through a major process of like learning about yourself and all of these things that you're learning about yourself they don't happen in calm waves okay they happen in um, very like uh, it, they they were like the the transformation was very very disruptive, and I feel like it needed to be disruptive because you need it to be shaken awake. Because I feel like with the state of the fluctuation, the the changeable moon and the emotional state, it's like you're going through each day constantly changing. And so the shakeup needed to happen at the core, at the foundational level, for you to figure out on a foundational level, who am I? What am I about? What do I want? So I feel like that's what this is really screaming out to me. And I, 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 I'm sorry if the reading is so like, um, if it's just so abstract, I feel like it's very abstract. But I feel like it's an inner process that you have to kind of discover on your own, okay? I, I almost think of this as like the Nautilus shell. Going to the, getting to the root of the problem. Understanding yourself. And you can't really proceed in life, in major endeavors, in making major decisions, unless you really know yourself. You have hesitated making some major decisions because you know you you have this sense of responsibility this sense of like oh, i don't really want to hurt anybody um i i just want to let a situation drag on and then i feel like there's a jolt to the system and it's telling you 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 can't really this is not going to work you you need to be decisive you need to not drag your feet you need to you know uh, let something come to an end if it must end you need to stop lying to yourself that this is working because it's clearly not working and so you definitely have some major swift fast decision that you need to make and so this energy is coming in in a way where it's very disruptive so that you can you know execute and and just be done with it okay it's like ripping off the band-aid i'm sensing um so that's where things are headed and uh, the other thing that i'm sensing i feel like it, it should almost be like this okay all the major arcana cards are stuck together that's what it feels like to me the four major arcana cards should be here 
And then what we're left with is the Two of Cups and the Queen of Swords, okay? The Two of Cups is a soulmate connection. This is like heart, body, and mind, okay? This is a union that you have with another person. Um, I feel for some of you, there is a, a relationship here that might be fractured because of financial issues, financial considerations. Um, one person might be a big spender and the other person is very thrifty. Um, one person might be carrying the weight of the uh, financial you know, burden of that relationship and the other person is might not have been. Um, this is a balancing act, okay? This is now things that have been very, very unbalanced and unreciprocated and just off kilter are now being rebalanced, being re restored, and both parties are definitely coming together. This card is also screaming out to me reconciliation with somebody who is very significant in your life. Um, for some of you, we have here the Queen of Swords, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be reading the, the signs, you know, this is clearly an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, but I also see, feel like Aries, I also feel uh, Scorpio and uh, uh, Virgos here as well, okay? And um, the energy is pretty much telling me a situation where somebody is coming back, somebody is trying to communicate. Somebody is also, you know, coming in with more sensitivity, okay? It's linked up here with the moon card. It was like this. Somebody is starting to understand you. They, they're starting to understand how sensitive you are. They're starting to kind of like... Um, if they have been very harsh in the past, I don't see them apologizing. I just see them in the past as kind of like, you know, uh, brusque and, and blunt and, and forceful. And I feel like they're starting to understand how sensitive you are. They're starting to understand that you need more. It, it's like they, they, they need to kind of like um, not be forceful with you. They need to not push you. They need to not give you ultimatums. They need to just, you know, take you as you are on your own terms. Yes, your feelings might fluctuate. Yes, one day you love them, the next day you don't. And so they need to be accommodating of your fragile emotional state. And they need to be understanding that they shouldn't bring conflict um, in their interaction with you, into their interactions with you. So I, I feel like somebody is coming back in, wanting to communicate. They're approaching you with a lot more sensitivity. They're approaching you with a lot more like, um, I, I guess like awareness for who you are and the way you operate. And they're, way, they're willing to accommodate that. And then on the other hand, I, I feel as well for many of you, um, knowing, I, I see this really deep sense of spiritual knowing awareness that have you know kind of like it's like things illuminated for you where you start to understand that you know i love this person today i really really love them the next day they act up and i don't love them i feel like you're starting to find that middle ground okay once again straddling that middle ground wanting to be responsible like like um taking the responsibility with the overindulgence and trying to find a balance, a middle ground, so that your emotional state doesn't fluctuate from one extreme to the next, so that you can walk down that center line and be okay, because you're doing things in moderation. And when you're doing things in moderation, when you're very balanced, you start to see who you are. You're not swaying from one you know, extreme to the next. And so you're starting to see things in a more balanced manner. And once you start to do that, I think like everything that has been problematic and confusing and just, you know, off kilter in your life starts to realign. Okay. So I feel like you're energetically uh, balancing yourself and in the process of finding balance and being very balanced in your own skin, Everything else in your environment benefits 
and it starts to write itself. Relationships start to write themselves. People starts coming at you correct because now they understand. And I definitely feel a lot of communication, emotional communication that will be had between you and another person that will give you a lot of insights, a lot of guidance, and just a lot of, um, I feel that sense of like emotional support coming through from your environment and, and with the people that you care about and the people that you, you know, spend your, you want to spend your time with. Um, I'm also feeling here, there was a situation, and I, this is where I, I do want to end it. Uh, there's a situation here where you've been trying your very best to do the right thing. You're getting out of that situation. And there's somebody in the picture who is like a soulmate connection. You have known it all along. You have neglected the soulmate connection because you had a lot of things that you needed to take care of and now that you know this transformation is happening in your life you have a new path that you can walk towards and i feel that you're going to want to reconnect and work at this connection that you deem is the soulmate connection somebody that is like um i almost feel like they're the yin to your yang and vice versa, okay? So I will leave it at that, all right, um, Cancers? I hope the reading has been helpful for you. I hope it resonates. I hope you're not upset with me for being harsh with you guys. Um, I just read whatever that comes through, okay? And I hope the reading either way is uh, helpful for you as you navigate the confusing energy of November. Uh, best of luck and uh, for those of you who are interested in a reading I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic her name is Bridget She's based out of California and she's very good at her craft. I highly recommend that you get a reading with her um, I if you are also interested in this amazing deck, it's the white sage tarot um, it uses um, the traditional rider weight and tarot imagery as well as you know animal totem that's the best way I can describe it and it has been great from like I enjoy working with this deck a lot of images came out and a lot of messages came out when I uh, started using this deck and so the link for that is also in the description box below support your local artist and uh, visit her site she also has other things like other artwork and things like that for sale um, all right, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful November and uh, happy Thanksgiving for those who are celebrating. I hope you have a tremendously amazing time with your loved ones and your family, and I will talk to you soon, okay? Take care.